If you've been on the internet for the last three weeks at all, you've probably heard the sensational story about 3 million toothbrushes, yes, toothbrushes, that were used in a DDoS or a distributed denial of service attack that is actively rampaging all over the internet and taking control of websites. Now, the problem with this is that that didn't actually happen, but it does highlight a really concerning trend in this need for manufacturers to make everything smart or internet enabled. So let's talk about what happened with these toothbrushes and I'll highlight some really interesting devices that are coming online that probably shouldn't be online. Here we go. So February 7th rolls around and ZDNet, very large publication for cybersecurity and other technology types, puts out this article, three million smart toothbrushes were just used in a DDoS attack. Really? What's next? Malware infected dental floss? But seriously, it's a reminder that even the smallest smart home devices can be a threat. Here's how to protect yourself. Now, the problem with this, the reason why it's a tweet by our buddy Kevin Collier here, is if you go to ZDNet now, they have since rescinded that article saying three million smart toothbrushes were not used in a DDoS attack after all, but it could happen. So how, how did we get here? How did we get to a place where ZDNet is rescinding its own articles? Well, the issue is the origin of all of this is from Swiss newspaper, I'm not going to try to pronounce this, AZ, uh, written obviously not in English, but if you translate to English, generally what it says is the toothbrushes are attacking, these are the current cyber threats, and this is how you can protect yourself. Now this article is behind a paywall, but the article itself is the result of an interview between AZ and Fortinet, which is a pretty big US company that does cybersecurity research, where Fortinet and AZ were discussing what was thought to be a hypothetical scenario, but because of a translation issue between German and English, Turns out that the newspaper thought that it was real and Fortinet didn't mean to make them think it was real or so, there's some issue going on in there where Fortinet got used as a point of authority in this article, which ZDNet then saw and then wrote their article. Now they have since rescinded this article and they've written what went down in the story. They say, in a note to ZDNet, a Fortinet representative said, to clarify, the topic of toothbrushes being used in DDoS attack was presented during an interview as an illustration of a given type of attack and is not based on research from Fortinet or FortiGuard Labs. It appears, however, the narrative on this topic has been stretched to the point where hypothetical and actual scenarios are blurred. Now, ZDNet does go on to describe how it is really important to be aware that more and more devices are coming online. It no longer takes could. We're living in homes filled with insecure IoT devices, and this is entirely true. Right now, probably you have either a smart thermostat or a smart washing machine, or even our buddy Johnny over here has a smart washing machine that washes his clothes, which also, by the way, he points out, is extracting 3.6 gigabytes of data out of his home network. Why is this happening? Really couldn't tell you. I think what's actually happening here is this line of washing machine is an AI enabled washing machine, meaning it's pulling out camera data from cameras inside of the washing machine and then processing them to train some kind of washing machine AI model, which like on its own sounds freaking ridiculous. And then using that data to more efficiently wash clothes. If that doesn't scare you, I'm not gonna read this headline out of fear of being demonetized, but you can probably read this yourself. Maker of smart these things left users' emails, passwords, and locations exposed. A company that makes a that device for people with a, yup, can be controlled by a partner over the internet, exposed users' email addresses, plain text passwords, home addresses, and IP addresses, and in some cases, GPS coordinates due to several flaws in its servers. But it gets even better than this. Same kind of device, however, a uh, different manufacturer leaves users at risk of a permanent lock-in. Now, this article is fucking wild. The cellmate that thing works by allowing a trusted partner to remotely lock and unlock the chamber over Bluetooth using a mobile app. Now, obviously this makes sense, right? You install the app on your phone. The phone then has to go out and hit some server and the server sends a push request down to your phone and it does the opening and the closing of that device. The app communicates this way using an API, but dude, this, I can't, I cannot describe to you how absolutely insane this is, okay? What I'm about to tell you blows my mind. How this company is not legally on the hook for the potential damages is out of this world to me. Okay, here we go. The API was left opened and without a password, allowing anyone to take complete control 
of any user's device. So what this literally means is I could have opened the belt.com slash the username, I don't know, big dong 420 or whatever. And I could have done open. And if like, if I knew all the correct information and this is pre the patch, if I hit the enter key right now, this poor man's device will open or maybe it will lock. And maybe, maybe I just keep hitting the refresh button and it's just locked forever. When prompted about this issue, the Kiwi chief executive, Jake Go said that, told TechCrunch that a fix would arrive in August, but that deadline came and went. We are a basement team, he said in a follow-up email explaining the risks to users. When we fix it, it creates more problems. So th this is the dilemma that we're in. We have this world of devices that are all more and more getting internet enabled with security as like the second thought. It's not a thing they think about until it's a problem. And these companies can't even afford to fix it. It is absolutely wild, and I want to know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. My name is uh, my name is Level Learning, and I do security stuff. Um, goodbye.